right hey you guys welcome back to my channel today i'm actually going to show you guys how i make soap but i've skipped a few steps to show you guys because if not we'll be here for a while um right now i'm actually going to show you guys how i make my colors and what i use to make the colors because everyone always asks me how you do the swirls how you do this how you get it to look like this how you get it to make these colors so i'm going to show you guys right now what i use to make my colors i don't like to show the brand of products i use off of the fact of you know we all use our own type of stuff but whatever not a big deal um the soap i'm making today is actually for the spring line so the colors i'm going for for this one is actually pink and green and i'm gonna try to see if i could do like two different greens and just one pink um i'm gonna try to mix a few colors see what i get uh, the good thing about making soap is that you push the limits. Like, there really is no, I don't want to say right or wrong, but you could pretty much do what you want. Like, that's the best part about it. Like, it's so good. But anyway, what I'm doing right now is I'm just pouring out some olive oil so I can mix my colors in there. I like to use either almond oil or olive oil to mix the colors it, it gives you a um it allows the colors to disperse better into the um the melted oils and the melted lye so right now we're just waiting for our lye water and the melted oil to cool down which that you wait for it to get about 10 degrees to each other so um basically if you want it to be at I'm trying to decide what color i want to use I think I'm gonna go with oh man I'm so indecisive I'm gonna try this green um basically what that is is you have to wait till your lye water <clears throat> and your oil wa uh, oils are within the same temperature so like if you're soaping at let's just say 130 which is pretty high um, you want to wait till either or is at like 120. So what I've noticed is when you want to make swirls, you want to soap at cooler temperatures off of the strength of, um, soap when you, when you soap at hotter temperatures, like I said, with 130 or like 120, 110, your soap batter does thicken a lot faster so it's pretty hard to soap and do different things such as swirling and um whether it's hanger swirls your pour soap swirls whatever it is that you're trying to do it's a little bit harder because it's hotter so it's gonna cool it's gonna um thicken faster is the word that i'm looking for i was trying to figure out what word am i looking for um so there's that so i bought this little tool to mix my my um oils because I used to hand mix it like literally with my hand I used to just mix them but this makes it so much easier and now typically what you want to do is you want to you always want to mix the lighter colors into the darker colors and literally this is what it looks like after I give it a few swirls a few mixes I look at it to see that's a pretty pink so there's that and then I'm gonna move right on to my green so you just put it in there you don't have to really worry about the colors mixing as far as this And this is what it looks like when it's all mixed up. It's really pretty. I love this green. <laughs> That's why I was having such a hard time because I wanted to try a different green. Listen, and this thing is powerful. Like, if you're going to mix this, you need it in, like, a, a tall, a tall thing. This green is a little bit darker. Um... So hopefully, 
I can do some kind of swirl with that. Hopefully, I pray to God because I ain't trying to think. So now that my colors are mixed, I'm just going to... How I test to see the temperatures of my soap is obviously with a little thermometer. So I'm just going to go over and test my lye water. So my lye water is actually at 80 degrees, which is... 88.9 which is actually pretty good that's where i want it which is on the colder side now the problem when you soak cold is soda ash there's a possibility that you might get some soda ash which is just a cosmetic thing it just will have like these little white speckles on top you could easily steam the soap or you could just take a wet piece of napkin and wipe it off you could use alcohol as well you could spray it to prevent um to prevent the soda ash which is which is rubbing alcohol like i said um moving on i have my mold hair it's ready this is actually a mold that i got off of amazon it's fairly cheap it's not expensive um it does the job i have like maybe 10 molds i have a whole bunch of different sizes a whole bunch of different lengths this gives me about 10 even bars which isn't bad because it actually works out for me once again i'm a small business i don't really soap um i don't mass produce like that so that's actually fine with me I'm actually using the fragrance today. This is a fragrance I'm gonna use today. So this is where the color inspiration came from, which is pink and green. I love the smell, it smells so, like it has like a floral, just amazing. Um, normally I weigh out my fragrances, but this is a two ounce bottle. Um, so I'm just gonna use the whole thing. Now, when you're using fragrances, you actually have to calculate the weight between your um i like to call it batter your batter you like to weigh out that so if you're working with about say 51 ounces um typically brambleberry actually has a fragrance calculator so you type in what fragrance it is that you're using it'll actually the type of soap that you're making whether it's cold process soap or hot process soap liquid soap whatever it is it'll ask you and you um put in all the calculations and it'll tell you how much fragrance oil you should be using if you want it they'll give it to you at a low medium and high so if you want something that's um scented very strongly then that'll be the one that they normally say don't use because it, it's going to require more but i typically stay between low and medium once again each fragrance oil is different so it'll give you different calculations for this one the two ounce is pretty perfect so i'm just gonna just use the whole bottle sometimes i don't even use the whole thing i put like i leave a little bit behind just so i can remember the scent and just in case if i wanted to use it for like a, a salt or whatever the case is if i wanted to do like a trial run i typically leave some behind i don't like my stuff to be over powerful and overly scented i don't like that um so once again that's how i make my colorants and how i color everything I'm actually, I may do a video on colorants and listen, up to this day, five years later, I'm still learning with some of these colors because some of these scents, um, like the fragrances actually cause discoloration. And the good thing about Bram, um, Brambleberry, Brambleberry, I don't, can't speak today. Their labels actually tell you if it discolors. So, you know, like, okay, well, this doesn't discolor and it behaves well in soap. So that's great. Um... So there's that i'm actually gonna go check on my oils and see if it's ready to go because i'm ready i'm excited i haven't made soap in a month and i feel like i'm just behind even though i'm not but i just have not been making soap and it sucks because soap is where i get my creativity from and i just have not done it in a month all right so our oil is actually ready to go it's at 86 degrees and our lye water is actually ready to go as well so <clears throat> definitely gonna work with that now just something about lye I am pretty comfortable with working with lye when I first started I was like so panicky I will say exercise caution when you are using lye such as goggles a face mask um, you can wear longer sleeve if you like so that if anything splashes, it doesn't get on your arm and burn your skin because when it touches your skin, it does not feel good. I've had it happen before. Um, I'm pretty careful, but as always, you never know mistakes happen. I don't have on long sleeves today because I'm just like, whatever. Um, 
But once again, when you mix this with distilled water, you don't use regular water, you don't use tap water. It's just a certain type of water you're supposed to use, and it's distilled water. And when you mix it, <clears throat> and that kickback, honey, of like when the fumes start coming up and all that crazy stuff and it's hot, this thing gets up to at least 180 degrees. I've seen it before. It gets really, really hot when it's mixed with water. You're never supposed to mix water with lye. It's always lye to the water, if that makes any sense. So you're never gonna start off with lye in here and then pour the water. No, you're gonna start off with your water and then pour your lye. Once again, you, you're more than welcome to mix it outside in a more ventilated area because once again, those fumes are strong. You will cough, you will react to it. Um, and like I said, make sure you have some type of protective gear on because you just never know. So my blender is sounding a little crazy. I don't know if it's because I haven't used it in such a, in such a while, but it sounds a little cray cray. But um, I kind of want to show you guys Trace, but then that requires me moving the camera and all kinds of stuff. And I haven't figured out this whole setup yet. So I'm gonna show you guys how it looks. I poured it in there, so that's what it looks like right now. Um. I'm gonna see if I could get, if I could get to show you guys when I put the blender inside. So this is all you do. So you could kind of see it already mixed a little bit. And ta-da. And that's how you kind of want to get it. You want to get it at a thin trace. You don't want it to be too thick, sorry. You don't want it to be too thick because then you're not gonna be able to do your swirls in it. So you just mix it a little bit, give it a few bursts and call it a day. I'm just gonna give it another burst just to make sure. it down on there um now everybody knows i don't like making soap and not putting anything in it such as some type of clay something um so typically i love clay i love putting clay in soap it's just something about clay and soap that just i love it what it does for your skin and then what it does for the bar to me is so amazing so I'm actually just gonna put some in the batter. I don't know why I love to call this batter, but that's what it is to me, so that's what we're gonna call it. I'm just gonna hand mix that a little bit. That was about, I wanna say a tablespoon. And like I said, I typically measure everything out. Um, some things I know how to do it just by sight. Now you can see like the white speckles in it. <coughs> that actually helps too to lighten up the batter a little bit. I'm just going to give it a few just to make sure that it's spread out it's evenly dispersed I try not to mix too, too, too much because then like I said the more trace you get so now I'm just going to separate this so this is for my green and then this is for my other green. Now, I don't want too much of that green in there, so I'm gonna give it more of a lower amount. So there's that. This is vitamin E oil. I didn't even bother measuring this out because it's finished and I just wanna get it done. <laughs> just want to finish it up. Like I said, some soapers will measure out their soap mix 
so that they have like even amounts for when they're doing their pour and all that stuff once again it depends on what i'm making it depends on what i'm doing it depends on the type of swirl i'm going for i don't really have time for that <laughs> not that i don't have time for it but i just didn't want to do that for this one this one i'm kind of like let's go with the flow you understand me so now i'm pouring in my colors i'm gonna give it another mix to like just stir up everything if it's settled to the bottom i like to leave some behind because i'm going to show you guys what i do with it after So if you notice, I haven't put my colors in yet. I mean, my um, fragrance in yet. And that's simply because you're always supposed to mix. I think I'm gonna need more pink for this one, you know? I feel like I could kinda already tell. Um, You're always supposed to do colorant first and then your fragrance. So let's see, because... <laughs> Actually, this might be the color that I was going for. Yeah. This is perfect, y'all. I don't even need to add any more. I thought I was going to need to, but this is actually the pink I wanted. So that works. So we're going to switch positions. Now I'm going to mix my green. I have to figure out a better camera setup because I actually want you guys to see more of it happening, but this is the green. And then this is the darker green. I'm hoping that this comes out the way that I imagine it. This is the two different greens. That's what they look like. Um, the pink, I might, I think I'm gonna leave it like this. And that green, I kinda want it a little bit darker. Now, once again, you could, you could do this straight with oil or you can mix it like how I'm about to do. The problem is it just takes it a little bit longer to, um, get to the color that you want the oils definitely make it easier to mix when you do it with the oil Okay, so I've already measured out the fragrance oil because I had to measure it out to make it sure it was even for the batter or for my mix, my soap, whatever you want to call it. I'm just stuck on batter. I've always been that way. It's always going to happen. Sometimes you'll notice that your soap will start to thicken up on you while it sits there. Like I said, this is why I soap at cooler temperatures because it's easier um, to work with. So once you give it a little mix, it'll... It'll, um, you know, lighten up a little bit. So I actually got the green to be a little bit darker than I wanted it to. Um, so I'm hoping that it works. Because even this green is a little bit lighter than what I wanted. But whatever. I'm not going to stress myself out about it. All right, so here goes my mold. I'm gonna see if I could come a little bit closer so that I'm able to
right, so first I'm gonna pour my pink. I'm gonna save just a little bit, like literally a little bit. Um, first gonna go in with my green. My green is actually starting to thicken. And I'm gonna pour and I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna go down. And I'm just gonna keep doing that, going across and across. I'm gonna go back up. Same thing with my other green. I'm actually gonna start from up top. And the reason why you do that is because you want it to get as deep into the soap as possible. Oops, I just made a mess, as always. It never fails. Then you come back up. Can't believe I spilled that much soap. Baby, let me just clean this off so I'm not making too much of a mess. Dang, that was a lot. That was more than what I thought it was. Now, keep in mind, this batter is very oily. Like, it's not soap yet. So, it's very, very oily. Now, the reason why I saved some of that pink is because I wanted some pink on top. I knew it was going to look like this. So now this is what we call a hanger tool. And what this does is this does some amazing swirls in there. I've been having some issues the past couple soaping times because I haven't been getting the swirls that I want. So you just do it like that and then you just bring it back. it off like so I typically just rest it in my sink and when I'm done with it I'll clean it up after I try to keep the workstation as clean as possible to even it out. I'm just gonna pour some of this on the top. Oh, because I don't want it to be like a whole bunch of green. Now, sometimes you have to be careful on how you pour when you're doing this because the top, um, it'll puncture the soap. It's like sometimes you'll see us do this where we're like trying to spread it out evenly where we'll do like that it makes it a little bit easier for the poor so there's that I'm gonna try to I'm trying to figure out why this color fused up as much as it did compared to the other colors. It's the same brand I'm using, so that's a little weird to me, but whatever. Now I think both greens are actually gonna come out looking the same from what it looks like. I don't know, but whatever. Like I said, this is the fun part about making soap is you do what you want and call it a day. Okay. And I don't know why that side of the mold is always more full. 
Okay, so now here's the fun part, and this is my favorite part, making my swirls inside. Well, on the top, I should say. So those same colors that I left behind, I actually used that to make those beautiful swirls that y'all see on top of the soap. Oh my God, I wish y'all could smell this because it smells so good. So this is the other green I'm gonna use on there. All right, and then we're gonna do the pink. I love this pink. I've been looking for a pink that's like nice because I have not been able to find one. Um, and with this, I kind of don't, I don't like to plan them. I just go with the flow, like I said. Um, and then it's like, whatever comes out, comes out. All right, so now you could do this anyhow. You could do swirls like this. You could do it like this. You could do whatever. I typically play around with it and I like to start and I just, I just swirl, honey. I just let my hands take me wherever. You always pull it out from the side because you don't want to pull it out and mess up. Um. Once again, like I said, I don't know what's been going on with this mold. Obviously, it has a lot in there. But that end is always, like, my troubled end. I'm just going to have to clean these up really, really good when I take them out of the mold. This gives me AKA vibes. <laughs> the sorority, the black sorority, definitely gives me AKA vibes. So now I was going to put some stuff on it on the top, but I don't know if I even want to do that anymore because I'm in love with the top. Then I kind of don't want to do that. Like, look at that. That is really, really pretty. I don't know. I'm thinking of, I was going to put Himalaya salt on there. I may just still do it. I got a new pair of gloves and I just ripped it. The ratchet mess. I'm only going to put gloves on one hand because I need to be able to open these things and I can never open them. So I'm probably just going to put some stuff along the edge. So this I'm actually going to put Jehovah beads. Just for extra moisturization on a person's skin. And put that on top and it actually it actually looks pretty with it on there these are actually the smaller ones like I said I like to pull inspiration from what I'm making so okay so there's that so that's the Yohoba beads that's that one then I have gold bursting beads and <clears throat> the gold bursting beads also has an oil in there as well. So when it like touches your skin and it hits with the water and mix with the water, it'll pop. And you'll get that extra moisture. So this I wanted on here because I just wanted to add some extra color. There's that, and then 
just gonna put a little Himalayan salt. Now, the thing with salt, <laughs> when it starts to get hot, they actually pull moisture from the air. So, and that's actually a problem sometimes, but other than that, they're not bad. I'm trying to be so careful because I want it just on the end and I don't want to spill them all over the place. And that's done. So now I'm just going to put it in the oven and let it sit for 24 hours. Now what you do is you warm up the oven, not too hot, just warm enough to um, promote the gelling phase. And then once the oven is warm enough, you turn it off and then you put the soap in there. Don't get it too hot because if it's too hot, it'll crack your soap. You'll definitely have soap that's cracked and you can't save it. Um, there are times where you'll be able to like fuse the soap back together. I've had to do that, but it's just a cosmetic thing. You don't want your soap to heat up and all that good stuff. That oil is definitely going to dry out the colorants. That definitely dries out at the point. It doesn't stay oily like that. This is different. Normally I don't like doing tops, um, textured tops, like the swirls on the top and then putting stuff on there. But I was like, you know what? Let me let me go for the kill. Like, like I said, that's the point about making soap. You push that envelope. So now the Himalaya salt on there, once again, is just it'll provide you with a little exfoliation. 